happened to be on a Victron user forum, and someone had mentioned that they started playing with uh, diagrams.net, which is uh, an online version of the old Draw.io. So I thought I'd take a peek at that, and uh, kind of liked what I saw. So what we've done is we've created a, a library of uh, a different symbols uh, to be used with the diagrams.net, and we've also created a few uh, example uh, drawings for you to, uh, to play with and, and configure uh, to your system. So uh, let's dive in and uh, we'll get started. So first thing we're going to do is uh, go down to the, uh, the downloads section of the, uh, the Rec North America and we're going to download the design tool. So here we've got libraries and a couple example sketches. So for now we'll just start with the libraries and this is a zip file and this is all 1.0.0 stuff so uh, let's just see how it goes here. So we've downloaded that now. Okay, so I've had to go into a private window um, because it saves all of the uh, libraries for me and we want to start fresh. So we're going to start with a new drawing. And we'll make this a little bit bigger. We'll go file. And what we're going to do is we're going to import a library here. But the first thing we need to do is go in to our downloads directory. Take and extract this. So here's all of the uh, the libraries that we've created. Uh, we have a components, equipment, page uh, page setup, rec, a couple of Victron items, a couple of wake speed items, and just some wiring symbols and uh, cabling. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new drawing. And we'll just start with a blank drawing, and we'll call it Rec BMS Demo. All right, so what happens here is we get a set of general and some additional libraries that come automatically with it. But we, we want to do is we want to import some drawings some libraries. So we're going to go File, Open Library From, and our device. So I've gone into my downloads, I've extracted the zip file that I downloaded, and now I'm going to import the libraries from that zip file. So that's our electrical components here, and as you can see, we've got a few of them here. So we'll do the same with the rest of these. So we're going to library from our device. Wish we could do these all at one time, but I haven't been able to find out a way how to do that. All right. Okay. Now the nice thing news is, is that once you've done this, it will retain that information for you in your browser history. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with a couple of basics here, and I'm just going to show you how I have been doing things. There's probably a better way and I'm, we're certainly open to ideas. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a background. Now I'm just using my control button here to change my page size. And center this on the screen. You gotta grab a corner there on the screen. Okay. And we can see here we have a nice little title box and uh, so what we're going to do is uh, go into view <clears throat> and layers and you can see right now we're in the background so we're going to lock down the background we're going to add another layer we're going to edit that layer and we're going to call it our drawing layer Okay, so that means we're not going to trip over this when we're trying to do things or grab it by mistake. It, it doesn't exist on this layer because we've locked that one down. 
And if we want to, we can actually turn it off as well. But we'll, we'll leave it there. Okay, we can close that now. So I'm going to add a couple of components here. So what I've done is created some, uh, some detailed uh, library uh, items here, uh, shapes, I guess, that try and do quite a bit for us. So this is what an active BMS looks like. So we'll just take and drag it over. And then, if we want, we can go down and grab a battery pack. So here's a 24 volt. You can build your own. I think it might actually be better to import something than try and build it in here, and it, it goes kind of wonky when you uh, when you shrink or grow it. But we'll just work with this one. Actually, we can't use a 24 volt one. It's an active BMS. So we grab a 12 volt one, and we need to add a shunt to that. Drop that on the page. We'll shrink that down a little bit. I like to put a nice uh, breaker uh, on the outlet right beside the battery. Keep it closed for ABYC. Okay. So there's most of our components right there, although we do need to add a relay. Okay, so we're not going to go into too much detail here, but I will show you some of the basics. So, what we're going to do is we've got, where did our wiring go? Here at the top. I've added in a couple of things, and as you know, I've got a little bit of, as you can see here, I've got a, some descriptions to go with them. So we can see that this is our battery positive wire. We take and drag it over. And I'm a ladder logic guy, so I like to create everything with ladder logic. Oh, don't like that. Control Z. We'll just drag the one end over here. Hmm. It's trying to attach itself. Okay, so as you can see, we're having some problems doing this. Is what it's trying to do is it's trying to attach itself to a connector. Now, by holding down, I've found on the shift button, you can have it just drop anywhere you want on the screen. So we're just going to have a drop right here. And I'm going to take the other end, shift button down again, and we'll put it here. Use some arrow buttons to move it over. And I'll do the same with my main negative wire. Hold down on the shift button, drag it over to where I want it to start. So the rationale with the ladder diagram is that everything flows from negative to positive. And in the case of a dual system, you'd actually run two positives here. So we'd have our load and our charge buses. So we'd show both of our positive buses on the right-hand side. In this case, we're only going to use a single relay. So we've only got the single bus. Now we're going to grab a negative wire here, drag it over, hold down our shift, connect it to right here and connect it to there. So because we've got a green uh, star there, what should happen is that that will follow us around the screen. Now, we're gonna take and add one on our positive side. Again, hold down on the shift button so that I can drop it anywhere on the screen. and move this down a little bit so that it lines up. There we go. So now it's starting to look like a drawing. <clears throat> I've also got some nice little curly drawings in here as well. So we're going to take and uh, drag this over and hold down on my control, we'll zoom in on this, hold down on my shift, and we'll connect to our first wire here. Take that to the negative side. Oh, but it's the wrong color, okay, because this is our negative. So what we do is we go over to the right-hand side here, and we can see we've got three tabs, style, text, and arrange. Under the style, we can see that this is a curved line, and that it's red, so we're going to change that to a black. Now, there's also a neat thing here. When you're using uh, a, a straight line, 
we were to make this uh, straight, we get another option here, which are line jumps. And we can create line jumps, which I'll show you later. They're not available in a curved line. But the cool part about curved lines is you can pretty much do anything you want. You can grab new points and drag them out. You can uh, add more text to them that follows you. They're really quite handy. Oh, so we've changed that to black. We've connected that to there. OK. So that's just an example of, uh, of using that type of line. If we're going to be using a straight line, I'll just show you how. So let's say we're just going to grab a straight one. And again, I can change this to a curve if I want, simply by selecting the color and curve over here. But we're going to go hold down and shift, hold down and shift again. Let's uh, just quickly show you how a the, the jumps work. So for some reason, I've, I've got a wire going across here. We hold down on our shift, grab onto that, and we're going to take it over to our shunt for some reason. And we can see here now that we've created an arc jump over that. And you can see that comes right from here. And if for some reason we want it bigger, we can extend or shrink that, uh, that arc. Okay, so that doesn't go there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And that doesn't go there. A couple of other things we can uh, show uh, is there's things like sending to back and bringing to forward. For instance, if we're drawing something and we want to overlay it on top, like I did with this battery, we can, in this case here, we can do things like combine a shape or group. And that would be under a range. So you've got group and ungroup here. Now, this is just meant to be a primer. Um, there's lots of stuff online, so uh, please uh, please use the, that. But this just just meant to help get you started. Now, for instance, we're doing a inline fuse here, and we were to add in a battery wire to it. And we take and hold down on our shift so we can get inside there, drop it on, drag this down. OK. That's not very pretty. So what we do here is we click on this one and right mouse button and we just bring it to the front and it brings it in front of the red line. So by using the right mouse button here we can duplicate, we can send things backwards, forwards, clear the wire points. Uh, we can also add a link if you want to add a link to a URL. We can edit the image, we can crop it and select the edges. So this is just meant to be a primer, as I've mentioned before. Um, and if you want to create your own things, you can use the plus button right here. So let's say we want to add a rectangle. Sorry, there's a rectangle. And we can sh edit its style, its color. Put some text in it, arrange it, change its size, orientation, like so. One final thing I'm going to show you is if you've decided you build something and you like it and you want to save it as, sh as a shape, um, we're just going to put test in here. And we're just going to take this over and we're going to add it to our tools. And all we have to do literally is that. And now it's saved as a symbol. To go and give that symbol a name, like I've done here with the borders, and we just go and edit the symbol list. We can add and delete it here. And we can just call this our demo symbol. And then we can save that. Our computer and now when we click on it we can see that we've got a demo symbol and if we want to use it somewhere else it's just a matter of doing that
I forgot to mention how to use an image as a shape, so we're going to squeeze this a little bit in here. So, in this case, let's say we want to add a quattro. So I've done a, a search on quattros. I found one here that I like. We view the file. Right mouse button, we save the image in our downloads directory. Oh, see that's a web app. Can't use that one. Web, uh, WebP is a shortened uh, format used for faster downloading, which isn't necessarily compatible with things. Um, let's see if we can find another one here. And we see, that, see this is a JPEG, so that'll work fine. So we save that, and then we go to this other little app called remove.bg. And I can upload my image here. And this is the one that we just added. And it will take and strip the background for me. The cross hatching is uh, so now we can just download that. If you want it in HD, you can pay for the software. And we'll save that. We go back to our drawing. And we'll make this a little more readable here. And we will go plus image. We're going to open an image. We'll take the one with our background removed and we'll reset. Scale it. And here we go. So now we have a Victron Quattro that we can use. Now, if I would have done a better job of this, I would have actually cropped it first and taken it down as small as possible, then removed the background, cleaned it up. But this will give you the general idea. Now, just like any other shape, we can just take over and add it as a new shape to our thing and we can go in here and we can give it a title that's all it takes to add a shape to your library the secret here is in using the shift button when you drag objects to it because it'll automatically create your point for you if you don't do that it's going to jump all over the place or you have to manually create points Back to the main program. Final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we would open a drawing. And I'll just show you something that I've already done here. So we're going to select something from our list and we're going to pick a example sketch. Open this in a new window. The desktop version of this as well. This is what this icon is here. So you can actually download it and work with it offline. So this is basically uh, a Victron showing the, the Venus in the network. We have our WS500 in here, our active BMS, and I've shown wiring diagram sample sketch and then we have a dual relay version of it on the second page where we've got the two relay configuration okay folks I hope that's kind of given you a little bit of uh, idea of what's happening and uh, what the library is available if you'd like to contribute to the library uh, that would be great just uh, send us uh, an email with, uh, with your library. We'll look it over and get it added to our site. That's it for today. Happy drawing.